people who quit, what straw broke the camel's back? Story 1. Dillard's. They told me to clock out and work all night because the regional was coming to inspect the store. So they wanted me to work for eight hours moving around heavy stuff for free. Quit on the spot. Told me I wasn't a team player. I asked the manager if he would pay me for not working. He said no. I asked him why I would work without getting paid. Blank stare. I got hired by Dillard's, but they kept pushing back my start date by weeks because the store owner was on vacation, and with my budget, I really needed to stay working. They make a huge deal of starting you off on a little above minimum wage and promising frequent raises and easy commissions. Talked to a friend who worked there before, and it sounded like they only start you off above minimum wage so that they can give you a pay cut as soon as you miss a quota. I ended up starting another job while I was waiting for them. Five Five guys did this to me when I was 18, hired me, and said I could start as soon as the manager got back in to train me. Six weeks later, I had run out of money and moved in with my grandparents in a different city four hours away and they called me asking if I could come in Monday morning for training. I told them politely to go F themselves. I basically begged Best Buy to hire me because I wanted out of the fast food world. I went in there every week to talk to the manager for a couple of months and they finally hired me to do loss prevention. Not what I want did, but hey, whatever. They told me I had to do a drug test. It was like 4 p.m. and I got lost on the way over there and they closed before I could do my drug test. I was so embarrassed that I begged for this job and then failed the first task I was given that I never called them or went back to the store again. The guy who hired me never called me, so I guess he figured I must have been a stoner. Story 2 Old sales job I had. Landed slash closed a big deal with a nice commission check heading my way. Found out a week or so later that the client wasn't mine. Therefore, the check would be going to the correct sales rep. The correct sales rep just happened to be related to the boss. And so they got a free commission check without ever lifting a finger. Left that day. I worked in telesales when I was 16. Just a job for the summer. The company was selling marketing space and magazines for small construction companies and my salary salary was commission-based. I decided to work smart, not hard, and approached a few bigger companies. After a few days, I was in contact with one of the biggest construction companies in my country and was closing a deal for a two-page ad. Expensive ad. Nice commission. My boss was happy but told me that the deal was so big that one of the full-time employees would bring the deal home. They literally just made the last confirmation call and sent over the papers, and took the commission. I did not turn up the next day. A a friend of mine, 18 at the time, had the exact same situation happen to a T, but with a more petty and positive outcome. Fortunately for him, his dad worked in sales his entire life, so he knew how to navigate this. When he told his dad he had landed a major tech company for a full print ad, think Microsoft big, his dad told him to keep it a complete secret until the closing date, and if anyone, especially the senior sales reps, asked about anything, to just lie. He did all the contacting himself, and his dad helped him with all of the paperwork and important phone calls. Luckily, he said no one really expected much from him, and thus didn't ever bother him. The day rolls around to finalize the deal. My friend does the closing call and sends the finalized and signed paperwork to be filled. The secretary in charge of filing and setting up commissions is flabbergasted, but files for the commission payment anyway. Boss sees it roll around his desk about two days later and is absolutely steaming. Fires my friend on the spot for risking such a big deal as a part-time child. My friend doesn't give two craps. Friend's dad had discovered that this particular company had a guarantee on commissions, regardless of change of heart for customers. The employer was legally required to pay him the commission, and on top of that, a friend called the big company and told them he was fired and they immediately pulled out of the ad. The ex-boss tried to sue him, but it went nowhere. I didn't suffer a massive loss like this, but this does remind me of the time I worked retail. To make a sale, you had to input your employee code. I assume this was also to control the register so it couldn't be opened willy-nilly. One time I came in like five minutes early so my coworker was still on shift but was about to end, and I was about to take over on the floor. I decided to be a real team player and not wait around for the five minutes and just jumped right into selling. I was finishing up with a family unit, talking idly to the father when my coworker came over with her bag under her arm. I assume she was about to head out the door when instead she started talking to the mother and then gracefully took the 
item out of the mother's hands, led her to the counter, inputted her employee code, and processed the transaction. Then, she walked away from the register, waved goodbye to me, and whilst a little dumbstruck I said goodbye to her and the family and then went about my shift. I didn't want to get too worked up about it because I didn't want to be angry over something so petty and stupid. She clearly needed the sales figures more than me. Story 3 my dad died right before Christmas. I was already scheduled for a week off for family travel. HR said I could add three more days for funeral services so we could have it after the holiday. I came back and received a call from HR. The woman apologized and said she needed to ask, but would make it brief. She asked if my dad actually died. I told her yes, and she apologized again and said she didn't need anything else. Then the office manager called me into her office to tell me my boss had been telling people she thought I was faking it to get more time off. My my boss was horrible in general and relied on me to do the majority of her work, which is what led her to create the story about my dad not actually dying. She was hoping I'd be called back early from my trip. I had been interviewing for a job at another company and got an offer the day I got back. I called from my desk and accepted the offer, then packed my things and left. That is disgusting. Good on you for leaving. Screw them. The same thing happened to me long ago as a young adult. All the employees ganged up on me in front of the boss when I got back. It was surreal. Thank goodness I had taken a bunch of death remembrance cards from the funeral home with the relative same last name as mine. I started crying saying I can't believe they were doing this to me. Then I threw a handful of those cards at the lot of them. The boss picked one up and apologized. Then the others did the same. I told them to eat crap and I said I quit. Walked right out at the start of my shift. My old director didn't believe my grandmother died just because she lived overseas. Said he'd fire me if I wasn't in the office Monday. Come Monday, he literally sprinted and cut me off on my way to the VP of HR's office with her obituary. Ran into their office first, then came out looking flustered and pissed off. I still had to finish my day, but I got the rest of my bereavement leave. I basically gave him 20% effort after that, took a five-figure severance, and filed for unemployment. Unfortunately, this was as COVID lockdown started, so I couldn't even use the money to travel or anything. Just threw it into a savings account, since the unemployment covered all my bills. This happened to my mom. Dad died right before Christmas, suddenly and unexpectedly which was already extremely tragic and traumatic enough. No one gave her a hard time about taking some time off, but later on during a meeting with her manager, I don't remember if it was just a meeting due to something or a performance review, and the manager mentioned how she took time off around the holidays and that really made staffing difficult and was not appreciated. My mom, who was usually very sweet and friendly, was livid. She didn't yell, but said very directly and deliberately that she would have loved to have been at work instead of grieving and planning a funeral for her dead father father and returning the Christmas presents that she had bought him that he never got to open. He died Christmas Eve. That manager went white and was stunned. Serves the witch right. Story 4. My dad had cancer, stage 4 lymphoma. We couldn't have our phones on the floor unless we filled out some paperwork with HR for emergencies. Asked my supervisor for the paperwork and he said, don't worry about it. Well, when his boss visited, he saw my phone and asked me about it, so I told the truth. My supervisor was pissed. A couple of weeks later, I got called into the HR office, and my sister called to tell me my dad died. The supervisor wasn't there, but I left early. I took my bereavement and came back to work. My work bestie pulled me aside to tell me the supervisor accused me of lying about my dad having cancer and dying to the entire team while I was gone. I hugged her and just left. ETA, this was 13 years ago almost. I was 20 and was out on my own for the first time in my life. He was probably 40-ish and very big and fat. No way I could have decked him, but wherever he is, F you Casey. I was security at a mine in my early 20s. A couple of friends of mine worked for the mine, but were welders. Found out at 5am check-in that they were killed by a drunk driver the night before. I had to walk to my car and just broke down. My manager saw me walk to the car and get in and started yelling at me and ripped open my door. I told him I needed some time. He screamed that I was just being lazy. I turned to step out of my car and got my arm and leg out when he started slamming my car door on me. I got my other leg out and kicked my door out at him hard and knocked him over. Got out and screamed at him. I don't remember what I said, but I remember getting in my car, driving home, taking off my uniform, washing it and my spares and driving back. When I walked into the entrance building, he was there and had this smug look on his face, and I looked at him, told him to go F himself, and then threw my trash bag filled with a week's worth of uniforms at his face. Never looked back. He was later fired after the investigation. They had him 
on camera assaulting me with my own car door. I received an apology from the company and the regional manager offered me a job on the spot. I took it. Just got news several weeks ago that my dad has cancer and now needs to have chemo slash radiation and then surgery. The new director of my team said, oh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, you'll need to use any flex work from home days you have until you speak to HR. My manager, whom I've known for nine years, said nothing. HR was like, hey, cool, we can accommodate you until mid-February, but either come back or furlough yourself without pay. FMLA. I haven't walked out yet, but it's taken a lot of energy not to send FUI quit on a regular basis. At this point, I have completely shut down. No more feedback, no chit-chat. I show up, do my job, and punch out. I'm not one to wish ill on others, so I hope if they ever, and I hope they don't, have to face down the situation I'm in, they are met with so much more grace than they gave me. Story 5 over a decade ago, worked at Tim Hortons, had been there six years on an overnight shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. We were always understaffed, usually just two people, one in the back, one in front of the house. Of course, it is slower than during the day. That goes without saying, but there are a few rushes when certain places close. Anyways, they hired back a guy who had previously been fired like four times for just not showing up. He was on the schedule on a Sunday morning with me. There was a 20 dozen donut order, and that was the day the freezer truck arrived and I put that away. I remember saying, if he doesn't show up, I'm probably just going home. Needless to say, he doesn't show up. Managers aren't picking up either. I think I stayed for a few hours, futilely trying to get everything done. I closed down the front and the drive through for what I intended to be a few hours to try to at least have the order ready for 6am, but then a switch kind of flipped. I realized I wasn't going to be able to take a break the entire time. Somehow, I'd have to figure out how to put away a freezer delivery which arrives literally at 5 a.m., which is busy as hell, and I'd be doing that as well. The people that showed up in the morning would just do their usual bitching about stuff I wasn't able to do. I'd probably get written up again for some stupid reason, or because I didn't do X or Y or whatever, and all this for like 10.50 an hour. I paused and asked myself, how long do I want to work here? And right then, a bunch of drunk kids were knocking on the door, apparently confused why the lights were were off and the door was locked because that's an enigma. I decided six years is enough and went home. Damn, as someone from rural Ontario, 4.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. at Tim's is crazy busy. Those farmers need their coffee, damn it. I remember going to my 6 a.m. hockey practice and seeing pickup trucks lined up out into the road at Tim Hortons every time. And you were doing that solo? Yes, that is about when it would pick up, about 4.30 to 7 a.m. was probably the busiest time. The car is definitely wrapped around the building by around five or so. The way it would work is there would usually be two people, one did the back of the house prep, the bake as we called it, and one would be out front. The lobby would be closed around 1am and the front person would do all the cleaning tasks while handling drive through while the back person would do the prep, orders, and on Sunday mornings, put away the freezer and cooler truck delivery. I was able to do both roles, so it would flip-flop depending on how it was scheduled. I was able to handle the drive through on my own all right, e.g. taking orders, getting everything for them, and taking money at the same time. It was manageable, though obviously took a bit of multitasking to save time, so there was a lot of having to take orders when I was nowhere near the till and remembering to punch them in while also remembering what specific six donuts some customer wanted in their six donut box. It was always kind of funny to us how it took four people people to relieve one of us at seven though. Sometimes they would even try to make me stay longer because they didn't have a runner to make coffee and get the donuts yet, which I was always amused by because apparently we were the lazy shift who never did anything. I think three of you can do what I was just doing. Story 6 I was a shift lead in a kitchen where none of the management knew anything about BOH. I ran grill, saute, expo, and oven solo during every peak shift. I ordered trucks, prepped all week for weekend brunch, wrote kitchen schedules, coordinated kitchen cleaning projects, contacted vendors for repairs, and generally ran the kitchens day to day. I was given the keys and started opening six days a week. I was working 55 plus hours and loving it. I expanded our brunch service to Friday 
Fridays as well as Saturday slash Sunday, and I came up with an early week menu to use up leftover brunch items and minimize waste. I helped grow weekly sales from 40 to 45k to 75 to 80k in three years. I started having issues with closing management on shifts where I wasn't there. I'd get in at 6 a.m. to open and the restaurant was left a mess and prep slash stocking wasn't completed. I talked to the staff and tried to get them to help out, but I had no support and follow through from the actual managers. This went on for weeks. Then one week I was in at 5 for Friday brunch prep. I was prepping sheets of bacon and went to the back to pull the biscuits I had prepped the day before. I had left them on a speed rack. I found them on a shelf stacked on top of each other. The weight of the trays had smashed every biscuit into a single sheet of dough on the lower trays. The speed rack had the dressings and cold items from the line closed the night before. I did about 90% of the brunch prep by the time the opening manager showed up at 8.30. We opened at 9. I told her what was left to set up the line. She asked why I was telling her her. I laid the sheets of dough in front of her, dropped my keys on top, and walked out. I got nearly 50 calls from them that day and dozens of texts. I didn't respond to a single one. A few days later, the owner of the store called me and asked who he needed to fire to bring me back. I told him I'd pass and ended up finding another job in a day. A little over a year later, this restaurant shut down and was demolished to turn the space into a parking garage. Did they at least pay you the hours for coming in so early? I worked in the kitchens for a few years, and one of the ladies who worked there used to come in just as early to prepare for the shifts. We usually come at 9 and opened at 11. She always came in at 6 or 7. They did not pay her the hours when she came in so early, but she loved her job too much. Yes, the owner liked me and greenlit as much OT as I wanted. I was making $22 an hour at 23 years old and made sure I was paid for every minute I was there. I asked a couple of times to switch to salary. That would make me cheaper for the owner, but would give me insurance and other benefits. He kept saying he'd prefer to keep me hourly. I was making enough that it wasn't a huge deal. When I left, I worked two kitchen jobs for a short while. I worked from 7am to 3pm at a catering company and then went to the other and worked 5pm to 2am at a fairly large bar slash restaurant downtown Monday through Friday. It took just a few months for both new places to offer me leadership slash management positions. I accepted one and got back to roughly what I was making before, but with fewer weekly hours. Story 7. I am working at Sears part-time for Christmas. They never trained me. When my supervisor came in for something and found out I was working alone, he ran out before they could ask him to help. My other supervisor had a nervous breakdown and while crying, said he wanted to punch the manager, but was a felon and needed the job. I just got tired of the crap because I was literally just working for Christmas money. They found me at my other job and asked me to come back because I had figured out how to do the job without being trained. I said no, and they told me I'd never be able to work for Sears or Kmart again. Shiver me timbers. I was working at Target for several months as a filler job while I was applying to other things, and one of the managers was on such a ridiculous power trip, among many other issues, that I was so fed up that I called and quit over the phone a couple of hours before my shift. I also got the, you do realize this means you'll never be able to work at Target specific location again, right? They were so serious I laughed and said, you betcha, bye. They really thought they were rocking my world with that, and I'd be crying all night wondering why I'd sabotage my chance at a retail manager position. I have a horrible boss right now in a solid position for experience in my industry, and he loves to say how he's the best boss and that other companies won't take care of us the way this company does. Meanwhile, they continually find ways to screw us, pay us ass if you're not an outside rep or management, and do not care about us at all. He treats me like a child and ignores the fact that I've had high-paying corporate positions previously and know firsthand how much worse this company is to work for. I'm applying to other companies slash positions. Only reason I'm there was to build experience in the industry I swapped to. I was in training, sitting in the back at a computer on my second day when the HR person interrupted to give me crap for the cotton khakis I'd bought from that store, and still had the receipt for in my purse being jeans because of the two tiny rivets on the watch pocket. I'm paraphrasing, but I explained that the receipt, store sign, and pants label said khaki. She came back with some BS involving that since I was in the military, I should be able to follow the dress code. I replied along the lines that since I was in the military, I didn't need her petty power crap because I had already had a better job with better career choices than she'd ever made. Grabbed my crap and bounced. I got a call about a week later asking me to return. I declined and explained why. The guy apologized and said to let me know if I 
I changed my mind. The guy I was dating at the time was working in electronics. He did some digging and apparently she pitched such a fit that her manager finally asked what happened. He was so worried about targeted harassment or something because I was military that she was written up. She was supposed to call me, apologize, and invite me back. She doubled down on my attitude, work ethic, and a few other things. She was fired and the manager tried to get me back. I'm just glad I didn't stick around for the crazy. Story 8 Verbal abuse from my boss. I'm an extremely patient person, but when every single word out of someone's mouth is berating and condescending, there's no price worth putting up with that, and no reason to subject yourself to it for longer than necessary. This is happening to me right now and I hate it so much. I got promoted and transferred to another department and my new boss is unhinged. I loved this job and worked my ass off to get promoted, but I'm actively looking for another job because I can't do this. I won't do it. It's so frustrating. I'm so stressed to have to keep going until I can find something else, but I'm trying my best to push through. This is basically why I quit my first job. Put up with the boss's nonsense for way too long because I needed the money. He would always complain about our work despite us being cleaners and him not checking the facilities until one hour plus after the morning clean. Yeah, no way in hell a campsite shower block is still gonna be spotless. I quit when he escalated and threw a mop. I told him to F off when he suddenly wanted to sit down and talk. ETA, two hours after I got home, my brother who worked in another department of the Holiday Park texted me asking about the rumor going around about someone telling my boss to F off. Took great pleasure in telling him that it was me. My supervisor at my last job was essentially a bully. Always had to have the last word, berated and condescended, no empathy or compassion at all, who I think sniffed me out as a passive personality from the first day. I didn't quit on the spot, but by three months in I decided I'd give it one one year and then flee as soon as I could. This was important to my own career plans, but there were so many days I fantasized about leaving my badge and keys on my desk and walking the hell out. I managed to get a different job at almost exactly the one year mark. My new job is great. Still wake up in the night on occasion thinking about things the old boss said or did. It's hard to shake it off after a year of putting your head down and absorbing it. Absolutely. Same situation for me, down to not even being able to leave for career plans. It felt like it gave me minor forms of PTSD, and I had trouble with the new place I went to because I was still reeling in the effects of working with that horrible boss. It was insane. I desperately tried everything in my power to make the work situation work. I did everything she said. I logged everything I did by the minute so I couldn't be accused of not doing anything or being lazy. It didn't matter what I did. God, I hope my old boss rots in hell. Story 9 they never gave me the raise they promised me three months before. Then a manager tried to criticize me for not doing something that wasn't even my responsibility. I cursed him out, then cursed the main plant manager out in our meeting and left. About three days later, the plant manager called and asked why I hadn't been to work. He thought I was just venting and left for the day. I told him I said I quit. Not sure how that wasn't clear. On one hand, screw them. I'm on your side 100%. On the other, it's kind of cool that they were okay with you being so pissed that they didn't give you crap for walking out and leaving you alone for three days. I only quit with no notice once in my life. I was young and a lady poached me from another job with a lot of promises. I was working retail, so up for it. But she said she'd pay me X to start and X plus after I proved myself. Okay, I have a good work ethic, so whatever. I know I'm a good employee and was confident in doing a good job. I think y'all know how that went. Naive young me had no clue. Ray's never materialized, of course. Then they started criticizing my appearance. It was a service industry, but I wasn't a provider, was in front. I was well-groomed and neat. I just wasn't painted or overly styled. I had been interviewing and was offered a job elsewhere. Told by the placement agency to go tomorrow or we'll send someone else. So I quit. Cube surprised Pikachu from lying poaching owner. She was actually shocked and tried to get me to stay. I thought, well, what did you expect? I felt guilty for about a long minute, but I learned a lot from that experience. I made a top-level comment about this, but I quit a crappy pizza delivery job mid-shift, grabbed a few changes of clothes and drove out to Colorado for a week and spent a week getting high in the mountains with my cousin, and first thing when I got back, my manager texted me asking if I could pick up a shift since I was back in town. I literally don't know how to make it more clear that I quit than leaving the state for a week and going completely AWOL. I didn't answer phone 
phone calls or texts from anyone. If my cousin hadn't told my mom I was with her, she would have probably reported me missing, but no, I'll totally be on Monday. Story 10. I once worked as a landscaper, and during a slow month, some of us workers were asked to head to the boss's brother's property and help out there, which was fine. My boss asked that I pick him up in the morning and take him out there. The straw that broke the camel's back was while I was out there I had filled some buckets with water, and while I did turn the tap off, it was slowly dripping. My boss noticed this and had a complete meltdown. He made threats to harm the person who left it dripping. He didn't know who it was at that point. I dropped my tools, told my boss to shove his threats, and left, leaving my boss in the middle of nowhere. These fly-by-night landscaping businesses near me usually trust fund rural kids with big trucks they got as a graduation present and a few pieces of equipment on a trailer. They hire their hick friends to drive around all day from job site to job site in their AC trucks to supervise the illegal immigrants who actually do all the work. Story 11. I've only quit one job ever, in high school, when I worked at a grocery store, but I quit after I somehow was the only person scheduled to work on a Saturday night. Like literally the only person. I was 16 or 17. Granted, I lived in a small town, but being the only person working in a whole ass grocery store? To emphasize, only person, not a single other person was working. Not a janitor, not a manager, not a bag boy, no one else. Was just absurd. Never went back. A similar one happened to me. I got a job at a gas station over Christmas. I'd been there a day, and I was scheduled to work Christmas Day. I didn't like it, but such is the job. I figured I'd be there with at least one other person since I had very, very limited training on the register. Nope. The manager was in a huge hurry to leave as soon as I got there and laid the news on me that someone would be there with me, but about five hours from my start time. Don't worry, you won't be busy on Christmas Day, you'll be fine. The store was pretty dead until about four. Then all hell broke loose. I had people lined up through the store, winding around the aisles, people trying to pay with checks, people buying lottery tickets, angry people just leaving money on the counter and leaving, people trying to get gas and having card issues. I was just hitting buttons on the register to get it to move on. I didn't give a crap after trying to deal with this for an hour. To top it off, the person who was supposed to be in was late. I just about locked up and left, but she wandered on in. As soon as she walked in, I left. I just told her that the register might be off and I'm out. Never went back. I had this happen. The gas station was being built, so I had to drive an hour to a different city to train there. It was a graveyard shift, and it was supposed to be me, another trainee, and an employee from that store. Neither of them showed up, and neither their store manager nor mine would pick up their phones at 11pm. The employee on the shift before knew that I was alone and still left. Story 12 I used to work at IHOP in high school part-time. They were literally scheduling me during school hours and calling me when I wasn't showing up. I dropped off their stuff during the rush and left. I worked at a popular independent coffee shop when I was in college in the college town. A lot of my co-workers were also college students. My boss would have us give her our school schedules so she could accommodate them, but she always would schedule us to work interfering shifts with classes. I told her once that I couldn't do the closing shift as they intersected with my lab hours for my psych course. She told me I should have changed my semester schedule. I didn't quit then, but thankfully found coverage. I was 18 and dumb. And I did quit with little notice after she deducted money out of all of our paychecks when the closing register was missing $300 and all signs pointed to one particular sus employee who would have her boyfriend, wasn't employed, help her count the register at the end of her solo shifts. I had a pub job while I was studying at uni. Gave the manager my class schedule, told him I could work 9am to 2pm Monday Tuesday for setup and lunch service and then 5pm to close Wednesday through Sunday. The first roster, he put me on 3 to 9, Monday through Thursday. Then open, lunch, break, dinner, Friday and Saturday. Told him I couldn't do it. He fixed it to work with all my classes. The next week, same problem. Third week, same problem. Fourth week, same freaking problem. I just don't understand how he was getting this so wrong. 
Everyone working there was a student, aside from him, the assistant manager, and the chefs. We all had set availability, just make the roster the same every week. Fifth week, he messed it up again. I had found another job by then and just didn't tell him. If he couldn't respect my schedule and availability, then he didn't deserve to be told I was leaving. I also took three of the other bar staff with me to my new job soon after that. They didn't deserve to put up with that moron. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you want to share with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Channel. Thanks again, and see you next time!